In section 2 of this chapter, we are going to discuss linear ODEs, and we will start in this video with first-order ODEs of dimension 1, so that is called scalar, because dimension 1. First, let me give you the definition of a linear ODE. An ODE is linear if it is linear in the unknown function and its derivatives. And let me give you a few examples and you're going to get this very easily. Uh, y prime equals 3y is a linear ODE. Y prime equals 3y plus t square is also a linear ODE because uh, in the unknown function y and its derivative y prime you are linear. So the t square is not a problem. However, y prime equals 3y square plus t is not linear because of the square on the y, which is an unknown function. Now, even though in this particular uh, video we'll address first order ODEs, I'm going to give you the definition in general for linearity. And if you look at y second plus y prime plus 3y plus t equals zero, that also will be linear. Now you remember the equation of the pendulum, uh, that was theta second equals minus g over l times sine theta. Well, that ODE will not be linear because of the sine function. However, if from a modeling point of view, I can replace the sine theta by theta, for instance, if theta is really small, so you can't start with the pi over 2 here, but if, say that, you know, theta is really small, then a Taylor expansion of sine can actually lead to a replacing sine theta by theta. But again, that is a modeling question. I'm not saying you can do that. I'm saying that in, under some certain circumstance, you may. Now, if you replace sine theta by theta, well, this operation is called linearization, and what you end up with is obviously a linear ODE. Now, let me give you a proposition when you have y prime of t equals a of t, which is a continuous function, times y of t, plus b of t, which is another continuous function, and the initial condition y of 0 equals y naught. So that is an initial value problem, an ODE plus uh, an initial condition. And this IVP has one solution on R, the so global solution. And that solution is given here by this formula, Y of T equals exponential capital A of T times uh, exponential minus capital A of zero times Y naught plus capital B of T, where capital A of T is an antiderivative of A and capital B is the antiderivative of B times exponential negative capital A that vanishes in zero. And it's very easy to verify that this is a solution. All you have to do is to take this function, plug it in the IVP and verify that it is a solution. So that's very simple to prove. Uh, and for the uniqueness, well, you have to use the other arguments to, to prove that this is unique. So, with this proposition, we have a closed form, which means a solution, an explicit solution to the IVP, provided that we can compute these antiderivatives. Now, if b of t is equal to zero, and if a of t, small a of t, is a constant, let's call it m, then you have the equation y prime of t equals my, with the initial condition y of 0 equals y naught. And as you know, this uh, solution, this, this equation has, this IVP has this solution, y of t equals y naught exponential mt, which obviously is what you obtain when you replace b by 0 and a of t by constant m, which antiderivative, of course, is mt. Now, you can probably uh, remark that when why not the initial condition is equal to zero, then the solution to the initial value problem is simply zero, right? Which makes sense. I mean, if you start with zero and then the antiderivative is zero because it's uh, m times y, which is zero. So you start with zero, the antiderivative is zero all the way, then what you're gonna get is, well, a function which is constant, stationary, equal to zero on the entire real line. Now, there is an interesting question. 
say that you start with y naught, which is not zero, but which is close to zero. Let's say, for instance, 10 to negative 4, or even closer, let's say 10 to negative 100. Now, the question is, will the solution to the IVP stay close to the stationary solution, which happens to be zero, or not? Well, the answer is, it will depend on m. If m is negative, the answer is yes. The solution to the IVP will stay close to the stationary solution. As a matter of fact, even if you don't start with a y naught which is close to zero, it will. However, if m is positive, no matter how close you start from zero, if you don't start with a y naught equals zero, but you start with a y naught which is even very, very small, but not zero, then your solution will not stay close to the stationary solution. As a matter of fact, it will even blow up, it will go all the way to plus infinity. So that is the situation depending on m. Uh, you have two different behaviors. Uh, if m is negative, a small disturbance of the initial condition will lead to small variations of the solution. And this will later be called a stability. While on the other hand, if m is positive, uh, well, basically a small disturbance of the initial condition will lead to potentially extremely large variations of the solution, and this will later be called instability.